All right, so I've picked five values. I substituted in the function I have these, and I connect. I plotted the points, and I connected the dots. All right, this is what all of our x squares are going to look like. This is what we're going to start with. And then when I start adding more numbers in different places, it's going to change it, move it around different places. So this is our first parent function, x squared. All right. The next parent function we're going to talk about is an absolute value function. All right, we're going to do the same idea. I'm going to pick negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. I'm going to substitute these values into our absolute value function. So do that. And let's get some points for this absolute value. Let's see what this one looks like. So we're trying to get what our basic parent functions look like. And I'm picking these numbers, substituting them in, and doing by man. When I graph my absolute value, I'm going to get a V. So what's going to happen is if I ask you to graph any absolute value graph today, we're going to start with this V right here. And then we're going to move it around accordingly based on what the numbers are in the problem. All right, so each problem we have, that I'm asking you to graph these, we're going to start with a U, which is our X squared function. Or we're going to start with a V, which is our absolute value function, one of the two. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add numbers in different places, and we're going to see what happens. All right, so these, like before we move on, the five points for each of these are points that we're going to have to be able to graph without really having to think too much. We're just going to know this is what my U looks like and my V. All right, so what's going to happen first? We're going to put a number inside our function. We're going to put a number inside our square or inside our absolute value. Y. X plus 1 squared for the absolute value of x minus 3. Okay. If I add a number inside my function, if this number is greater than 0, which is a positive number, we're going to move our graph to the left that many units. So if it's inside my function and it's a positive number, we're going to move to the left that many units. If my number inside is less than zero, which means it's negative, we're going to move to the right. If it's a negative number, we move to the right. If it's a positive number, we're going to move to the left. So what we're really going to do is the opposite left or right. If I have a number inside my function, I'm going to do the opposite left or right. That's our first thing. That's after we draw our parent function, our u or our v, we're going to move our graph to the left or the right. If it's a positive number inside, we move left. If it's a negative number, we move right, because those are kind of opposite movements. And we're going to have four different types of movements that we're going to have to worry about. And this is the first one, my horizontal. Right. The next thing that's going to happen is we're going to have a stretch or a reflection. We're going to take a V and make it taller or make it flatter. 
and the same thing with our yield. So we're going to have a stretch or reflection. If I have a number of times my function, three times the absolute value, one third x plus one squared. If I add a number in front of my function, we're going to have a stretch or a shrink. A shrink is going to make my numbers get smaller. A stretch is going to make them get taller and bigger. Okay. So. When I have a number in front of my function, we are going to take that value and multiply it times the y's. We don't change the x values. We're only going to change the y values. So on this one, if I have 3 times the absolute value x plus 1, I'm going to take my y value at that point and multiply it times 3. If I had 1 third x plus 1 squared, I'm going to multiply all my y values by 1 third. So the idea is if you have a number on the outside, you're going to move, multiply that number times your y values. It's going to make your graph taller or make it shorter. That can be the second thing you do after you move left and right. So if I put a number in front of my function, that's going to be a stretch is what we're going to call it and we're going to multiply our y values by that number. And that's our second. I'm going too fast. If you need something clarified, please say something. You're not going to ask now. Stay back at the end of class and ask me some questions. I'd rather get them straight now, but if you're not going to, we've got to get them straight at some point. All right, the next idea is going to be a reflection. We are going to have a reflection of our graph when we have a negative sign in it. If the negative sign is inside the function, the absolute value of negative x plus 3, if it's inside the function, we're going to reflect over the y-axis. We're going to go from the right side to the left side, or the left side to the right side. If there's a reflection over the y-axis, that means my x value is going to have a negative sign in front of it. Yeah. The stretch and the shrink, going back real fast, a shrink is going to make them get smaller, a stretch makes them get bigger. The whole idea is a number on the outside, you're going to take that number and multiply it times your y. So your ordered pair, if it was 1, 5, then you did a stretch by 2, it's going to be 1, 10. The x value stays the same, it's your y value that's going to change. All right, so the next one, if I have a negative inside my function on the x, it's going to reflect over y. If I have a negative sign outside my function, it's on the outside, it's going to reflect over x. On the x, your x is changed, it reflects over y. Outside of the function, outside the square, outside the absolute value, is going to be a reflection over x, which flips up and down. These are just all the different rules that we got to know, and we're going to go step by step and explain them a little bit better. That's the next one. That's a reflection. On the x, reflects left and right. Cross the y. On the function, it reflects up and down across the x-axis. Alright, and the last one. If I add or subtract a number on the outside, x squared plus 7, after the value of x plus 3, minus 5.
these outside numbers are going to move my graph up or down. If it's positive, it goes up. If it's negative, it goes down. All right, so we, the first thing said inside, we do the opposite left to right. On the outside, we're going to do what it says and go up and down. All right, those are the four movements. So what's going to happen is we're going to graph a parent function, and then we're going to use these movements to graph a final answer. All right, when we graph, yes? What about it? Well, I'll come back to it at the end, okay? When we're done, stay with me and I'll go back to it for you. All right, so given a function, what we're going to do, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to graph that parent function. We're going to graph the parabola. We're going to graph the V, whatever it is. After we do that, the first thing you're going to graph is your horizontal movement. You're going to move the graph either left or right. The last thing you're going to do is you're going to move the graph either up or down. The middle two steps, as long as they go second and third, I don't care which one goes second, which one goes third, they're fine. But left and right first, up and down last. If you do this, you will always get the right answer. If you don't, you still might get the right answer, but you might not. All right? It's just better to go left and right first, stretch and reflect in the middle, go up and down last. Doing that is going to give you the correct picture. Not doing that, you still might get it, but you never know. All right, so going back quickly, we'll talk about it. Inside our function is the opposite left or right. A number in the front is our stretch, and we're going to multiply times our y values. A negative on the inside reflects over y. A negative on the outside reflects over x. And then finally, a number on the outside is going to move it up or down that value. And that's the order we probably want to do these in if we can help it. All right. Always horizontal first, vertical last. All right, so we're going to have two graphs. The first one, we're, I'm going to set it up step by step for you. Then we're going to draw four pictures to get to our final answer. The last one I'm going to give you, we're going to figure out what our five steps are and draw five graphs to get to a final answer. This is hopefully going to help you understand what happens when you add numbers in certain places. All right, so let's look at this first one. We're going to graph all four of these by hand. In tonight's homework, I expect to see more multiple graphs, not just final answers, because that really isn't telling us the idea that we need to go through. So what's going to happen first is we're going to graph our parent function of x squared. We're going to draw that u as our first step. Then we're going to decide what happens to my graph when I put a minus 2 inside my function, and we're going to force that to happen to our picture. Then we're going to look at the negative sign. Then lastly, we're going to look at the plus 1, and we're going to decide how we're going to change the previous graph to get to the next one. All right, so as you're writing that down for your grid, probably a 6 by 6 is plenty. I know that because I've done this before. So I'm going to draw a 6 by 6 grid, and we're going to draw four different graphs. I'm going to use four different colors so you can see the difference. If you have highlighters, pens, markers, whatever it is, after you draw it in pencil, go back on top of it with a different color. You don't want to do it in that color to begin with, so if you make a mistake, you don't ruin the whole thing. So after you draw your graph, and I'm going to do this one in red, I want you to graph me the x squared function that we have at the front of the, on our first slide. Graph me that x squared function that we have at the beginning. If you don't remember it, 
just put negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2 into that function. That's going to give you your five points. So if you just plug in negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, we're going to get this picture. Something close to that. All right, now we're going to look at the next step. How is my graph going to change if I put a minus 2 inside my function? How does my graph change if I put a minus 2 inside my function? Chat me and tell me. Or unmute yourself. How's it going to get moved? You're going to go to the right. Absolutely. Whatever's inside the function, inside we do the opposite, left or right. Since it's a negative, I'm going to go to the right two units. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this graph that I have, these five points, and I'm going to move each one of these points to the right two units. So on top of that same graph, Take your five points because of this minus two and move every point you have to the right two units and draw a smooth curve through it. Right, so I'm going to take all five of those points and move them to the right two units. All right, the next thing we need to worry about, if I have a negative outside my function, if I have a value, a negative sign outside my function, how is that going to affect my graph? It's a reflection. Let's go back and look at that reflection. All right, this one's outside the function. So that means I'm going to reflect over x. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to write down some ordered pairs real quick. Let's start with this one. This one's 4, 4. 3, 1. And we'll go 1, 1. And 0, 4. So what happens when I reflect over x is I'm going to take these ordered pairs and reflect them to the bottom. And I'm going to end up with something like this. All right, so I'm going to get rid of them so I don't have them on there. All right, so I'm going to take my ordered pair, 4, 4, and I reflect to the bottom. I change my y value, and I'm at 0, 4. 1, 1 reflects to the bottom as 1, 1. 
2, 0 stays where it is, 3, negative 1, and 4, negative 4. So that negative outside my function is going to take all my points from the top and reflect them down to the bottom. Right, so that's going to be my new graph. The negative outside the function takes it from the top and flips it down to the bottom. You're going to change all your y values. All right, then lastly, as you're wrapping that part up, if I add a plus 1 to the back, if I put a plus 1 outside my function, How does that affect my graph? So plus one on the outside. We do what it says. It's positive, so I'm going to go up one unit. So I'm just going to come over here on top of this graph, and each of these blue points, I'm going to shift them up one unit. And that is going to be my final graph. Let me make it dark so we can see it better. That is the function negative, parentheses, x minus 2 quantity squared, plus 1. All right, so this one, I told you step by step what to worry about next. All right, we have our parent function. I put a minus 2 on the inside, so I moved everything to the right 2. I put a negative outside the function, so I flipped it over the x-axis. And then lastly, I took the one that was flipped over, and I moved it up one unit. All right, the plus 1, because I have a plus 1 back here, what we said here, if I have a number on the outside, that's going to be a vertical shift. Because it's positive, I'm going to go up that many units because there's a plus 1 in the back. And then I just took all five of these blue points that I used to have, and I shifted them up one unit. Inside the function, like the first, the, this one is the opposite left to right. This last one, because it's a plus one, shifts it all up one. All right, guys, as we do these, there's a lot of different thought processes on how to do some of these steps. If you have a way that makes you think a little bit better, that's fine. Just make it work. Questions or concerns? I know your pets at times can be fun, but they can also be distracting on what we should be doing. No one has a question. All right, we're going to do the same idea in this next one, but we're going to do it a little bit differently. Instead of me breaking it down step by step, I'm just going to give you the function. I'm going to give you the function, and we're going to have to decide what is our parent function. Does it have a left and right movement? Does it have a vertical stretch? Does it have a reflection? Does it have a vertical shift? All the different things. So looking at this one, negative 2 absolute value of negative x plus 3, then subtract 1. This one, I think if you do a 6 by 6 grid, we should have plenty of space.
Alright, so f of x equals 2 times the absolute value of negative x plus 3. Subtract 1. Alright, the first thing we need to think about is our parent function. When I graph this, am I going to graph the parabola, the u, or am I going to graph the v? Which one am I going to graph first? I'm going to graph the v because of the absolute value. So the first thing I'm going to graph is the absolute value of x. Because it doesn't have the square like this one did. Alright, let's write all our steps out, then we'll do each one by one. Alright, does this have a horizontal shift? Is my v being moved left and right? And if so, how, much, how far? All right, someone put up three. I'm okay with three, but which way? To the right. To the right. Everybody agree with to the right? Because I have a positive three here, which way do I go? We go left. We do the opposite. All right, step by step, this says because it's a, a positive three, I'm going to go to the left three units. Opposite of what's on the inside. All right, next, I'm going to worry about this negative sign. That's either a reflection over y or it's a reflection over x. Those are my two reflections. Since it is on the x, let me go back, it's inside the function on my x. This time, we're going to reflect over y. And once we write all these all out, we're going to go step by step and go through each one. So I have my parent function, which is an absolute value. My horizontal shift is going to be left 3 because I have a plus 3. That negative sign is on the x, so it reflects over y from left to right. This is going to be the new part, the 2. I'm going to have a 2 outside my function. So we're going to call this a stretch by 2. And we'll do a better job explaining that when we get to it. And then to wrap it all up, What is the minus 1 on the outside going to do to the graph? We've got a lot of people. Somebody can type something in. It's going to go down. Yeah, exactly. I hope all the people with their cameras off are still with me and not trying to fake their way through this because it's going to be tough. All right, so first, on our graph, let's graph the absolute value like we did on the first screen. Graph those five key points of the absolute value. So my basic key points are going to be negative 2, 2, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2. Because all I'm doing is I'm taking negative 2 to positive 2. I'm substituting them into the absolute value and evaluating.
All right, next. The next thing we're going to graph is we're going to take those five points and move them all to the left three units. Because of this plus three, I'm going to go left three units for all of my points. And understanding what the shape looks like, you may not have to physically go through and motion each one to move. Once you realize what it means to be and how it works, after you do the first three, the other two should come easy because you're going to get the V. All right. When we start, let me go back. So I'm going to ask why we use those numbers. Okay. From the beginning, when we graph these to begin with, everything is going to be based off of the vertex. When you draw a basic quadratic, your vertex is 0, 0. When you draw a basic absolute value, your vertex is 0, 0. So I know I need my middle so I can get that vertex where it changes directions. And then I need a couple numbers on each side. <coughs> All parent functions, when we draw them, are going to be the most basic graph I can draw. That's why I chose those to get my basic shape. We need the basic shape, no movements, just the absolute value in the quadratic. I'm going to go back to where we were. All right, so move them all to the left three units. Okay, and I, ch again, when I do the absolute value of x, if I do the absolute value of negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, I'm getting 2, 1, 0, 1, 2. And that's where I'm getting the answers from. So this is what I have right now. Let me write a couple ordered pairs up here. This is negative 5, 2. Negative 5, 2. Negative 4, 1. 3, 0. The next thing I have to do is that reflection. So it's going to take this point to the other side. It's going to take this point to the other side. All right, so I have to change my x values. So I'm going to take my ordered pair, negative 5, 2, and I'm going to reflect it all the way over here to 5, 2. I'm going to take my point negative 4, 1 and reflect it over to 4, 1. I'm changing my x values. I'm reflecting over the x axis or y axis. 3, 0, or negative 3, 0 goes to 3, 0, 2, 1, one 2. I'm reflecting over the y axis. I'm only going to work the right side next because the left side is going to have the same thing. All right, so I drew my absolute value. Those five key points that we did at the beginning, those are always going to be the start for absolute value. I took all the points to the left three. Because I have a negative sign on the x, right here, if I go back, when I have a negative sign on the x, That tells me I reflect over the y-axis. The last problem we did, I had a negative sign outside, so we reflected over the x-axis. And the next thing we got to worry about is our stretch. Our stretch says we're going to change our y-values. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all my y-values, and multiply my y values by 2. Not my x values, just my y values. 
So when I do that, by order pair 5, 2, this is going to change to 5, 4. By order pair 4, 1, 1 times 2 is going to give me the 4, 2. 3, 0 times 2 is still 3, 0. And I'm just going to pretty much copy on the other side. Because that's what we can do on a parabola and a V. Once I get to that vertex, copy it to the other side. But I'm multiplying each of these Y values by the value of 2 because of that. And now I got that skinnier purple graph. Because I have a 2 outside the function, I'm going to take all five ordered pairs that I have, and I'm going to multiply only the y values by 2. Leave the x is the same. It just stretches it taller. If it was a half, it kind of flatten it, make your number smaller. It's just what you do. When someone's asking why only the y values. Because what I want to do is I don't want to expand the graph by multiplying everything by the 2. I just want to make it taller. Okay. When you have a number on the outside, you don't change your x values. You only change your y values. It's just a rule behind it. All right. So when you do a stretch, you multiply the y's. Not the x's, only the y's. Yeah, the, the difference between a stretch and a shrink, a stretch is going to make it go taller, make your numbers bigger. A shrink is going to make them go smaller, which is going to kind of compress it, make it flat. Like if, I, if this was my graph, let me do it this way, and I do a shrink, it's going to look like that instead. It's going to compress it, make it flatter. Same idea for a shrink, you still only multiply the y's but your numbers get smaller. A stretch and a shrink is the same idea. One gets bigger, one gets smaller. Yeah, if I shrink by a half, I divide by two. If I Shrink doesn't have to be like dividing by a number. You're still multiplying, but you're multiplying by a fraction. Like if I did two thirds, if this was a two, let me change it real quick. If it was two-thirds outside of the absolute value, that would be a shrink, because I'd multiply every value by two-thirds. The difference between the two, you're still multiplying no matter what. The shrink, your numbers are going to get smaller. A stretch, your numbers get bigger. You don't divide, really. You multiply by whatever's out here. Okay, whatever is here, a third, two-thirds, a half, whatever it is, that's you're going to multiply by. The shrink has to be a fraction less than one. Okay, if I go back to here, where is it at? Here it is. A shrink has to be a number between negative 1 and 1. A number less than 1 but greater than negative 1, that's going to be a number that's going to make them get smaller. Okay, it doesn't have to, I mean, it has to be a fraction there, but you can also have fractions that make your numbers get bigger. If I multiply by 5 over 2, 5 over 2 is 2 and a half. My numbers are going to get bigger. Okay. Is difference. If you call everything a stretch, I'm okay with that. But just realize the shrink gets smaller. But you always multiply by the number on the outside. All right, last step. I'm going to take all five of these points and move them down one. That is the function, after I erase some ugliness, f of x equals 2 absolute value of negative x plus 3 minus 1. Yeah, shrink and stretch, you always multiply. A shrink has to be a fraction or a decimal. It can be like 0 0.5. 0 0.5 is going to cause a shrink. 2 thirds is going to cause a shrink. Any number that's going to make your numbers get smaller is a shrink. Like if you multiply by 10 over 2, 10 over 2 is a fraction, but that's 
really five and it's going to get bigger. Two over five is going to make it get smaller. Okay, good questions. The number on the outside, this number right here, outside my function, that tells us what we're going to do is our last step. Because I have a subtract 1 on the outside, that tells me to go down 1. If I had a plus 100 on the outside, I would move up 100. The number on the outside, let's go back to here. Outside your function tells you to go up or down. Just like on this last problem, this plus 1 told us to go up 1. This minus 1 made us go down 1. All right, I'm going to wrap this up here so we do a little talking. There are still a few problems left. They're a lot quicker than these. And I'm going to make, I'll make a video and post that with these last couple ideas. What I'm trying to get, the idea of this, it doesn't matter what your function is. Absolute value, a square, which is a quadratic. If it's a cube root, if it's some other function, putting numbers in certain places is always going to do the same thing. Because right, if I graph this, if I change that absolute value, to a square, the only thing that's going to change is your beginning shape. That's the only thing that changes if I change the absolute value to a square. The same movements, just your picture is going to look different. All right, so like I said, there's another video that will be posted with the rest of this.